Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be discussing safety, which honestly, we all need to be really considering when working with resin printers. This entire build is very DIY with a lot of headroom to veer away from what I've done to better suit your needs. I've also tried as best I can to avoid modifying anything that I've purchased too heavily so that in every aspect it remains as stock as possible in case you move on to something else. My main concern which drove me to do this entire project was simply that we do almost all of our resin 3D printing at home. Um, so air quality is of very immediate health concern. Um, printing at home I don't think is abnormal for the vast majority of people with resin printers since it's definitely one of the most convenient ways to work and the machines don't tend to require a whole lot of space to actually operate. I like to monitor my machines while they work and be able to cycle through build plates and resins and have files sliced and pre-ready to go, uh, all for the sake of efficiency. Prints on my SL1S tend to only take about two hours at most, um, which is actually really quick in terms of turnaround time. Um, because our studio is separate from our house, um, it would be a major inconvenience for me to have to uh, run over here because it's about a 30 minute walk and we're now in a full on Canadian winter. So that's really not gonna work. So how did I start this whole project? Well, it starts, uh, starts off with one of these shelves. All of these will be linked down in the description below, by the way. I went and picked up this particular shelf from Home Depot for 125 Canadian pesos. And I like this shelf in particular because it was well-priced. It came with five shelf options and everything is fully adjustable. This shelf can even be reassembled as a workbench if you wanted to. Uh, if you got another one, you could have like this really cool little station, one for printing and one for you know, taking your supports off or whatever you wanted. The shelf, it does actually claim to have a, a holding capacity of 4,000 pounds, but whatever engineer decided to slap that on there was really pushing their luck. Um, don't trust that number. Don't try to stick like some massive CNC machine on this shelf. It will not be able to hold it. We assembled our shelf with four out of the five shelves because the last one we decided to use in a little bit of a different way. More on that in a little bit. Something I don't think I really need to remind anyone of is that when you set up a workstation, make sure that you're working at a comfortable height. As someone like myself, who's almost six foot tall, um, I feel like I'm living in a world where everything is just designed for short people. <laughs> so I've had to raise my shelf up just a little bit higher to avoid putting any more strain on my back. Also something to consider is that if your printer has a flip up hood, or something that you lift off, you need to have extra space so that everything is all nice and comfortable for the machines as well. We were given a whole pile of white plexiglass or acrylic, I'm not really sure if it's plexi or not, um, a very long time ago, and we figured that this would be a great way to protect the shelves from resin. Um, if you're not familiar with resin printing and this is just something that you're getting into, um, resin gets literally everywhere, all over your printers, all over the work surface, it doesn't matter what you do, gloves or not, it's gonna get messy. So making the work surface easier to clean up should be of major importance. I know that Plexi is really expensive these days. And actually, if you didn't know this, it's also sensitive to isopropyl alcohol and it will break if it's exposed to it for long periods of time. We use ethyl alcohol, which as far as I can tell, doesn't have the same kind of effect on it. Using such a large surface might not work out for you. So there are other options when it comes to cleaning up these, this resin mess. Um, something that you could consider are silicon mats. You can get these on Amazon um, for your pets. Um, it's like a pet food mat. Um, they come in variable sizes and fun colors. And really the only difference between um, the pet food mats and say the actual ones dedicated to resin um, is that it has like a little paw print in the corner or something. So you can consider that or just get one of the wham bam mats. It's pretty much the same thing. Anyway, as important as it is to manage the liquid resin, fumes should be treated with equal amounts of respect. The best way to deal with fumes arguably is with activated carbon filters. Um, I didn't go this route because, <clears throat> well, I actually have a whole pile of other full-on exhaust equipment that we decided to use. Um, if you can vent straight up and outside, that's probably for the best. Maybe not in terms of your heating costs for your bills, 
but it definitely just evacuates that air entirely from the room, which I think is a little bit better. And in the long term is going to be the cheaper option because you're not going to be worrying about changing filters or anything like that. You can just kind of manage how fast the fan is spinning and it just pulls all those fumes straight out of the room. One of the largest ways to make this whole filtration thing work um, is in first part containment, which is what the shelf does for the most part. We had a kind of a hard time figuring out how exactly we wanted to approach containment because we didn't just want to slap uh, plywood on all the sides and you know basically build a box because then why would we need the shelf anyway? We could have just built a box. Um, we decided that we were going to go with these um, plastic drop sheet type things. Um, when we went to the local hardware store, they didn't have what we wanted. It was all very thin, uh, meant for like painting, you know, catching drops and splashes and stuff. And it just wasn't nearly as durable as what we wanted. So along the same train of thought, we started looking at thicker plastic because we knew that was definitely available. And we found this one and a half millimeter PVC tabletop protector type material. And we basically were able to get it off Amazon, cut to fit, so we didn't have to do much of any cutting. And we were able to get everything all in one go. So because they were largely pre-cut, um, we decided to cut one in half because it was cheaper to order a, a larger one and just have to make one cut. Attaching it to the shelf itself was actually pretty easy. We used a leather hole punch, made you know all our markings and everything for the bolts, and we just kind of attached it that way. It wasn't that hard. Um, along the top though, so that we had a much better seal, we did use double-sided adhesive tape. Now, just to note on the double-sided adhesive tape, uh, not all tape is made the same. Um, we went to the hardware store and we found this stuff called mounting tape from, well, Gorilla had one, and then there was one from, I think it was 3M, and they are rated for 15 to 30 pounds, which was amazing because this plastic being one and a half mil actually has a little bit of weight to it. Now the rolls are pretty small, so make sure that you measure out how much you need before, beforehand. Uh, for us, we only needed one roll and we were only short by a couple of inches, so it wasn't that bad. You'll notice that we didn't use uh, any plastic across the back of the shelf, and this is where that last fifth shelf came into play. We actually put it flat up against the back because not only now does it help with containment, but we can also screw things to it. So we're gonna have organizers and a place for our resin bottle, um, just all sorts of accessories and things to keep on hand that we know we need immediately. So I've designed this extra build plate holder so I can attach my build plate when it's not in use to the back and it gets out of the way. We're also gonna have this little shelf for uh, draining resin bottles into with a holder for the actual tanks, the vats. There'll be a place for the funnel uh, we have these little rubber scraper things for uh, cleaning out the vats that won't damage the FEP. Uh, we're also going to install some hooks for hanging tools, pliers, scrapers, wipers, cups, hex keys, masks, everything, gloves. The list goes on. It really doesn't matter what you put on the back. Um, if you decide to take on this project, just make sure that it's everything that you need immediately. So now that you have the fumes contained, it's probably a good idea to actually do something with them and get rid of them. For us, we have this inline fan, which is 300 CFM, cubic feet per, per minute, and it is strong enough that all the fumes just create an updraft around the skirt, and it pulls everything up and ejects it straight outside. So it's really, really, like, I don't, I don't smell anything, and it's working out really well. We have this on a dimmer so we can adjust for noise, depending on how long we're dealing with those smells. This isn't the most energy efficient solution just due to heating, um, but it's definitely the most direct and long-term cheapest way in my opinion. Just a quick note that I had all this stuff sitting around in my garage. So when we decided to use this fan and ducting, it was from a previous studio where we used this ventilation as our casting burnout kiln ventilation. So we knew it was strong enough to pull out smoke and fumes already. These fumes are arguably just kind of ambient in a way, so we really just wanted to create a little bit of an updraft, and this containment system worked out really well in favor of that fan. So if you decide to put this setup in your garage, for example, depending on where you live, you may want to do away entirely with the ventilation in favor of just wearing a mask when you're actually immediately working with the resins, 
and instead if you're in a cooler climate like us or a heater inside the enclosure if necessary. This is going to keep the resins and the machines printing well regardless of the outside temperature. On the note of resins and temperatures, some resins are easily affected by the temperature that they're actually being printed at, in particular casting resins. But there are a lot of high polymer plastic ones that are not as very forgiving. They need to be at around 25 degrees Celsius to perform at their best. So I hope it's pretty clear that this entire setup is very versatile. There are many ways that you can go about either ventilating or filtering the air using a very basic set of extra equipment. I tried to make this as functional and as simply as possible because, as you can tell, this is just something that you really should be doing when it comes to resin prints. You can play around with different shelf sizes, you could add LEDs, uh, you could mount cameras, rails for time lapse, you could do all sorts of things with this type of shelf. It just gives you a great base to work off of. And if you're not so much in the resin printing space, maybe you're more into FDM, um, you could easily fit, depending on your machine size, of course, maybe four to six FDM printers in there. And if you were to enclose it in such a way, you could probably heat that entire space. And then you'd be able to print with ABS or ASA pr probably pretty successfully. And you could just have one heated chamber and then one normal chamber, and you could have a bunch of different machines going. So I think this is really worth considering depending on, well, regardless of which type of printing you're interested in. I hope that this video has been inspiring to you guys uh, and definitely consider um, working with it. I know there's gonna be someone out there who feels a little bit called out. They probably have their resin printer like in their bedroom and they just think the fumes are no problem, but I'm telling you, it's not okay. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this content and found it useful, please give us a like. And if you want to see more of it, please hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video.